Hey, and welcome to Series 7. Wow, look at this, look at what we've got! <laughs> I cannot believe it. Uh, what a way to start a new series, hey? Um, it's a relatively mild autumn day in 2015 here in the UK, and it's the perfect time to have a look at a train set. Christmas is just around the corner. There will probably be thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of train sets sold all over the world in the next couple of months. So, I'm here with one. Uh, there was very, very nice people at Hornby asked very, very politely if I would be happy to have a look at the Western Express train set. Of course I said yes, and here it is. Isn't it just amazing? I mean, honestly, look at this. What's really quite special about this train set is that it's the first ever to have TT sound, to have digital sound built in as standard. I mean, as we know, digital sound is usually quite expensive, but the really, really fancy TTS system by Hornby is very cost effective. And so that's actually made it possible to fit a loco with this sound and some coaches and some track and the controller all in one train set for a reasonable price. So that's really, really good. That's really cool. Um, yeah, um, well, what do you get? It's the Western Express, so it's obviously GWR. There's no prizes for that. You can, you can note here that it's a Hall class locomotive, if you can see just there. It's Ketley Hall, I think. I'll double check in a moment. You get three Pullman coaches, two first class parlour coaches, and a brake coach. Um, you get a looper track, the standard sort of Hornby loop you can see just down there. You get a track mat, you get the E-Link control system, that's really important because without that it's going to be difficult to control all of the sounds, well certainly for me, and you get the Railmaster software as well. Um, now, I was looking up this train set on my phone for ages before it was even released and I've just got, I'm just going to read you the description here. Uh, it talks about how this set benefits from the awesome power of the E-Link system, um, giving you access to tons of controls, tons of sounds. Um, it is Ketley, yes I was right, yeah, it's Ketley Hall, which is a beautiful locomotive. I mean, anyone familiar with any of the GWR locos will know just how gorgeous the Hall class locomotives are. Both the Hall, I, will, I love all three. I do. I love the halls, I love the kings, and the castles. They're probably my favourite. But this is Ketley Hall. What else does it say? It, it does talk about the sounds, actually. Yeah, um, so you get GWR Ketley Hall. She's a 460, one of the greatest 460s ever. Um, I've told you about all the, all the accessories you get. This is a digital TTS function list. Headlight and rear light. What? Lights? No, I don't think it's got lights. No, I don't think it's got lights. Surely, surely not. I mean, it says it's got, no, that's it. <laughs> no way, we'll see. Um, background steam, uh, whistle low, two bursts, high short, wheel slip, coal shoveling, blow down, safety valve, injector, cylinder cart, brake, blower, guards whistle, coupler clank, fireman's breakfast. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is fireman's breakfast? It's like the sound of like sausages sizzling on the shovel as he puts it into the, into the firebox. Uh, toggle sound mirrors between chopping and coasting, and auxiliary lighting. It does seem to have some sort of lighting. That's just not possible, surely. No. Maybe that is an option, but they haven't included it. I don't know. We'll have to find out. Um, and then there's, a, there's tons and tons of description on the e-link system. This e-link system baffles a few people, but there's, there's nothing complicated about it. Basically, you just connect it to your computer via a USB port, you install the software, and then you basically control the train from your computer. There are other similar systems out there. There are apps you can get for your iPad. There's of course really fancy controllers by Lens and Gage Master and even Backman. And then Hornby do their own selects and elites that pretty much, pretty much do the same thing. But this is really quite fancy, so I'm looking forward to that. Okay, I know you're dying for me to open it, so let's open the box. Okay, well, ugh, it's quite a big box. It's quite heavy. Wow. Whoa. Look at that. Oh my gosh, you should see my face. I am, I am grinning like a little kid at Christmas. <laughs> Honestly, there is something 
magical about a train set, especially at Christmas. You just can't replace it. Um, I remember when I was a lad, when I was really little, I remember opening my very first train set. And it was actually for my birthday, not, my, not for Christmas, but just being presented with this box full of magical wonders. It, it was, yeah, it was just incredible. So here we go, there's a trick. In fact, I'm just going to borrow this Batman controller to rest everything up so that you can see it nice and clearly. How about that? So we've got our pack of gump, pack of gump. <laughs> that is the um, official technical term. Let's just have a very, very quick uh, browse through this because it's quite boring compared to this. So you've got, um, now this is quite nice, you've got a digital um, sound decoder manual for this particular locomotive, the whole class locomotive. And I'm hoping, because the E-Link software is quite fancy, the Railmaster software, I'm hoping that, like in the past, this locomotive is actually pre-preset. I think it's one of the options. I'm hoping it's going to be one of the options. I'll probably download the latest version anyway, but we'll see. So you have got a little manual here just for this locomotive, and it is very comprehensive. It details all the sounds. It even goes into details of how to change CV values. You know, if you're not happy with a particular CV value, if you want it to accelerate faster, if you want it to cruise at a lower speed, you can change that. You can do all of that, and that is incredibly fancy. Um, the, you don't have to be uh, limited to the E-Link system. It's DCC, it is fully compatible with any DC system out there. You're perfectly entitled to control it with a Batman controller, or a lens, or a gauge master, or, or anything you want, it will work. But it's definitely worth giving the E-Link system a try if it's bundled in a train set like this. So we will be having a look at that. You get, of course, a standard manual as well. Whoa, where are you going? <laughs> Never work with uh, leaflets, children, or animals. So you do get a standard leaflet too. This is the whole class. I don't have one of these. I have a book. I keep promising to show you. I have a binder full of these things. And now I've got something else to add to it as well. The whole class. It's just pretty standard. It's how to um, lubricate the locomotive. It talks about caring for it, replacing bits, adding bits of detail. Because there's, I mean, it's, it's a pretty well detailed locomotive, but it does talk about extra things you can do. Let's have a look. Um, it talks about the close coupling mechanism. That's good. It talks about body removal. That could be essential. Lubrication is definitely essential. Uh, just a tiny, tiny drop of oil. Honestly, tiny, but you barely see it. That's all you need. Any more than that, and you will regret it forever. <laughs> um, it's DC ready. Obviously, it's got a chip inside there. Um, it talks about fitting the brake quads. That's probably the only detail we have to add for this particular model. So it's really good. Um, what's this? This is on the E-Link. So it's a quick start guide on the E-Link system here. Now, um, oh, uh, installing the and uh, running, yeah, drivers. Um, a detailed driver installation guide covering Windows XP, Vista, Windows 7, and Windows 8 is available for download on the Hornby website. Um, mm, okay, this is going to be interesting. Uh, my Ultrabook uh, laptop actually runs Windows 10. It was run Windows 8. Uh, Microsoft can't count. There isn't a 9. And then <laughs> everything jumped to 10 automatically. Um, I'm not too sure if it's compatible with Windows 10. So to play it safe, I'm going to use one of my older laptops, which actually Lisa's. I'm going to use that, and that runs Windows 7. I know that the software runs with Windows 7 very, very well. So we will cover our backs by doing that. But you do get this really, really nice startup guide, like a, a quick start guide on how to do it. It's really quite simple. Just grab a laptop, get hold of the software, either from the disk or the internet, connect everything together in the order it says, and even if you have any problems, there are troubleshooting methods, you can contact Hornby, you can go onto forums, and you can even contact me, okay? <laughs> I am happy to help you out. So there's that, that, that. Uh, Hornby have started putting these in now. This is the owner's manual. This is really quite nice. It's just perfect for train sets. It talks about assembling the most basic of baseboards. It talks about how to wire up your track, how to not short circuit it. It's it's just really nice for people that, you know, for a lot of people, this might be their very first train set. You have to bear that in mind. 
and so it's nice to include that, that's really good. There's the registration card, um, don't think I've ever filled out one of those, but hey, this is, this is IC82, this is Crew Works. If there's nothing we can't fix, mm, I'm not too sure who else can. So um, here's the track mat as well, an absolutely huge track mat, it is the medium sized track mat I think. Um, and it should take this layout really nicely. You don't have to use it. You don't have to use it at all. But it is really nice, especially if you're a kid. I mean, I would have loved this when I was a kid. I would have been driving cars up and down the road and everything. So we are going to set it up on the track mat. The only thing that annoys me is it, it gets all crinkled and re um, uh, creased and stuff. So I'm going to have to try and <laughs> flatten it out somehow. But yeah, we won't worry about it too much. Okay. So here's your track, um, you get a whole load of third radius curves, I'm pleased to report the days of second radius curves as standard are long gone. These are really nice, high quality, gentle third radius curves, they're really nice, it's a really nice track, honestly it's really nice, it's perfect for a train set, absolutely perfect. I uh, probably wouldn't use them in, um, in like a proper layout you know, a huge proper custom built layout, but for, for the purpose of, purposes of a train set, they're more than adequate, more than capable. It's a really nice rail, and the third radius is a nice gentle curve as well. So that's really good. You get a couple of straights, you get um, a tiny, I think it's basically, I think it's second radius, it's basically like a, a half curve if you like. Um, I call them, and it's not technical, <laughs> I call them point correctors because basically you can put them, oops, butterfingers, you can put them onto a point like that, onto a set of points, and they, they correct the track, they, they make it go straight again, so it's perfect for a siding, which is what it's for, that's what they've included it for, but you can use them for, you know, whatever you want. So that's all really nice, you get your uh, transformer, it doesn't turn into anything cool, I'm afraid. It just simply cuts down the power for the e-link system. You get a buffer, that's quite nice. They're quite nice buffers, especially if you spray them and then paint them up and weather them and make them look really realistic. So you get a nice little buffer. That's your USB connection cable. So one end goes into the e-link and the other goes into your computer. Um, there's also cables in there to connect the e-link to the track, obviously, important. You get a really short straight, well actually a couple of short straights, and then your power track. And, oh, they've changed the colour. It's green. They've changed the little uh, nodules on the top to green, which is interesting. Oh, sorry, that's my phone. Um, of course, there's the e-link system, just here. It's really quite lightweight. There's nothing to it, honestly. It, um, I mean, it's just, obviously it's a, a fancy box of tricks, but <laughs> there really, it feels like there's not much in there, but there is, obviously. So you've got USB port on one side, power, and then those are your outputs to the track and your accessories, I think. Yes. Oh no, well, yes and no. And that um, this side is for your track, and then, and Hornby aren't the only ones to really push this. But it is recommended that you have a, a section of track just for programming. It's really recommended. Even if you're building a massive, really serious layout, it's definitely worth recommending, you know, having a little siding somewhere that's actually isolated from the rest of the layout. Cut it off. Make it look like it's connected, but actually make it isolated. And use that siding just for programming. So you can put any local on there, you can change its name, you can change its number, change its CV values, change its acceleration, deceleration, do whatever you want to do, and those signals don't interfere with the rest of the layout, because that's how the signals work, you see, they run through the rails. So that's a really nice feature, and definitely something I will be looking at in the future. And then finally, and I know you've been waiting for this bit, this is definitely the best bit, We've got the locomotive. So there is the Hall class locomotive. I'll switch to behind the camera in a moment. Three beautiful Pullman coaches. They're not the premium quality Pullman coaches. Um, but they are really nice. Uh, I don't think the tables light up or anything like that. I don't think so. I think that's the 
the fanciest Pullman coaches, and I don't think they're going to include those because the, the the price of the train set would just be you know astronomical. It would it wouldn't be worth um, trying to market it to be honest. Um, but they are nice. They certainly do the job. So let's have a look at that locomotive then. Okay, so let's have a look at that close. Let's have a closer look at that locomotive then. Now, even though this is like the traditional polystyrene packaging, I'm pleased to see that Hornby have now included a different way of getting hold of the locomotive. They've sort of like recessed it into this sheet of polythene, and basically you can just grab that polythene and then gently lift the locomotive out. Or at least that's the theory. Um, <laughs> not actually tried it, but. It should be okay. Here we go. Here we go. Gently. Oh. Yes. Yes, it's working. Oh, like a pro. Okay, um, I could do the third hand. Right, don't have one. I uh, blame evolution. Okay. Put, put the locomotive to one side. Put the box to one side. Bring the locomotive back. Ah, there we go. It's like it was never away. There she is, folks. There's the locomotive. That is Ketley Hall. Isn't she beautiful? The GWR locos are. <laughs> they just are. There's just something about GWR locomotive. I, th I think it's the livery. I think it's the beautiful green. I think it's the copper plated dome and chimney. I think it's the red that they use, the splashes of red. And even the font that they use for Great Western on the, on the uh, tender. Everything about it is just beautiful. Um, okay, there's a fair bit of weight to this locomotive, but considering everything that they've crammed into here, it's it's still incredibly impressive. Um, there are, yes, and I thought so, yes, there are cables running between the tender and the locomotive there, as you can see. And they aren't permanently attached, they're, they use one of those little plugs, one of those little DCC plug things. So you could detach it if you wanted to, but I'm not going to do that. There's no need to do that. I'm just going to very, very careful, carefully handle both. So the reason they've probably done that is because um, the motor is in this locomotive here, but then the chip and the speaker will be in the tender here. I, I would have thought, I definitely would have thought. In fact, yes, in fact, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm spot on because there's a little sticker there that says DCC fitted. So yeah, they'll put all the DCC stuff in the tender, and the locomotive is what has the motor. It's usually here, actually, in the in the place where there's the most space, which is the the, uh, the firebox. That's the firebox. That's the smoke box. I always get those mixed up. Okay, so um, it's actually really nice considering this is a train set model, and you usually get premium models on their own. You know, standalone locomotives are usually the highest quality you can get. Um, the locomotives you find in train sets are usually a little bit lower in quality in order to make the price more competitive and more marketable. But this is perfectly pleasing. I like that. Perfectly pleasing. They can put that on the box, I'll let them. It's, it's really, really nice. Um, the buffers are not sprung, but to be honest, we don't need to get to um, what's it about that. What isn't? Oh, that's nice. That's oh my gosh! That is very nice. This is a. I think this is another first for a train set. Yes, we have a dovetail connection there, and it's a NEM socket. That's really nice. It's also a slim, uh, slimline tension tension lock coupler, which is a, you know you know it's probably the most realistic tension lock you can get. Well, no, it's probably not. Um, I think there are ones by Roco which are even nicer, but. It does give us, well, um, I don't think the one, oh no it is, yes, the one on the front is NEM as well, it looks it, I'm pretty sure, sorry for the uh, insane close-up of my thumb there, I'm glad uh, my thumb is looking pretty Hollywood today. <laughs> so, wow, this is really cool folks, this locomotive, um, it has NEM sockets, it has NEM couplings, so you can take out these tension locks if you want, and you can put in your own, you can put in KD couplers, knuckle couplers, Roco couplers, there's a whole plethora of couplers you could put in if you wanted to. That's really nice. So well done Harmby, we're, we're glad that you've done that, that's really really nice. It's, it's, an, it's a beautiful locomotive. It's really smart folks. 
There's plenty of detail in there. I just love all of this. Look how shiny the coupling and connecting rods are. They're beautiful. This is the connecting rod, by the way. That's what goes into the piston. And then the coupling rods are actually what connect the wheels to the wheels. Um, you've got a beautiful livery application. I think it's, is it red or is it orange? I can't tell. And I'm not the best person to tell you because I'm actually colorblind. I'm actually red, green, colorblind, so I'm not the best person to tell. But whatever colour those stripes are, they look really smart, especially in contrast to the, the beautiful green. Cab detail, mm, there is detail there, as you can see, and what, <laughs> what is creeping into shot is tender detail. Oi, wait your turn. So, yes, you can see that there's some detail there, but it's not very um, detailed. It's, it, you know, there aren't any little gauges or brass handles or anything like that. But again, it's a train set locomotive, you know, to, to include a locomotive that did have that level of detail would drastically up the price of the train set. It would make it unmarketable. It's not what you're going to get. But for a train set locomotive, it's impressive. It's nice. It's really nice. Is the coal load removable? Hmm, I'm not too sure. And in this particular position, I'm not going to try and remove it. Um, it, I don't think it is. I will double check that later, but no, I would say it's not. I would say it's not removable. However, it wouldn't be too hard to make it look more realistic. You could add your own very, very thin layer of fake coal to it, or you could even um, like sort of brush it over with a, a sort of watered down PVA, and then you could sprinkle some very, very fine dust onto the top of that let it dry and make it look more realistic, if you wanted to. You, there's no need, you don't have to. It's a beautiful locomotive. It's a beautiful livery, a really nice tender. I think we need to set up the train set. Ta-da! There we go. Well, um, don't worry, I'll adjust the angle a little bit in a moment just to get it perfect for you. But it's all set up. It was really, really, it was really easy to do. There were no problems, everything went together as it should, and it only took me a matter of minutes. And I was rushing, really, because I knew I was on film. But um, yeah, it's all gone together really well. The only thing I will say is that I have, you'll notice, I have put the power track facing inwards and you probably won't. You'll probably face it, you'll probably put it facing outwards. The reason I've put it facing inwards is because I want all of the controller, you know, the controller assembly, the laptop, the e-link, I want all of that to be in the middle so that you can see it. Um, ordinarily, I would put it all on the outside so that it's not, you know, I mean it's not very realistic to have a laptop covering some cottage and half of a road. <laughs> um, but it's going to help you see me set it all up. Okay, so hey, welcome back. I'm joined by a couple of computers. <laughs> this is my Ultrabook. This is my baby. I, I absolutely could not be without this. I get all my work done on here. It manages all my email. It's got TweetDeck for all my tweets. Um, I absolutely love it. And what's really nice about it, and it's, a, it's murder that they, that they don't make them anymore, but it's a touchscreen one as well. So it, it runs Windows 10 and it's got a beautiful touch screen and it would be fantastic to control the trains using this but because it runs windows 10 and i didn't really have a choice about that um i can't really use it because i'm not too sure what the compatibility is like between the software and windows 10. i know that a few people reported problems with windows 8 which i think you can get around and it was the same with windows vista but i do know that it runs very well on Windows 7. And I have uh, a significantly, well, it's not significantly, but a, an older computer here that's not actually mine, it's actually Lisa's. This, for ages, ran the Minecraft world. This, 
this computer was hosting the Minecraft world that me and Lisa built Thomas the Tank Engine in. And this is currently running Windows 7. So even though it's, <laughs> it's a lot heavier and it's not half as sexy, it should run Windows 7 and the Railmaster software really well. So I'm going to be using this computer. Okay, popping the Railmaster software into the computer. Let's see what happens. Just at the end of this paragraph here, it says that after the installation of the software, you're ready to double click the icon and load it. But don't, because over on this paragraph here, it says before you run the Railmaster software, you need to install the driver for the eLink system. So, a little bit contradictory there. I suppose they get away with it because they've split it up into sections. So you could be in a situation where you already have the driver installed. But currently, oh, and the rain is starting as well. Currently we don't have the driver installed, so I'm going to install the driver now. Okay, that's all done. So literally I've just got to, where's the USB? Ah, oh, there's one on the side there, that'll do. Let's plug this into, nope, wrong way. Nope, right way. There we go. Okay. Um, I guess nothing's going to happen yet because the e-link is switched off. So I'm going to switch the e-link on. It's not actually told me to, but I'm going to switch the e-link on and then see what happens. Ah, yeah, there we go. Um, device driver software was not successfully installed. Yes. The quick start guide says that that can happen, but now we have to troubleshoot and basically get it working. Okay, so I've actually gone into my computer, I've gone to the device manager, and down underneath other devices is the CDC RS232 emulation demo. Hmm. What is that? Well, that's the e-link. <laughs> that is the e-link. So that's what I now have to install the drivers for. And it says that you need to navigate to the correct drivers and install them manually. So, I'm going to do that now. Oh, I think it's done. I think it's done. Windows has successful digital driver software, um, and it sees it, now. it sees it now as a USB serial port. So, yeah. In fact, it's this USB serial port COM3. This does take me back to when we did the, uh, the Western Master, if you remember that. That was another GWR set, uh, the very first E-Link set I looked at. So that's all there, which is good. Um, after installation of the driver, you should go into Windows, Windows' control panel and then into the device manager. You can search in the control panel. Open the category ports. Yep, it's there as port. And you should see a new entry referring to the R8214 Elite. Uh, no, not yet. This is normal, the e-link uses the same driver as the Elite. Click a note to the COM port as it is connected to, for example, COM1 or COM3, then close down the device manager and control panel windows. Right, so it's COM3, which is interesting. Uh, right, so let's run the software then, here we go. Yes, I do. This stuff in Windows really doesn't make me. You've asked to open a program, are you sure you want to? Yes! I am. Oh, no, that's quite cool. I do like that. Okay, so uh, language English, controller, home e link, speed unit, miles per hour, train set, what train set? We have the Western Express, which is there. It is there. Yes, yes, yes. I was really worried that the Western Express wouldn't be there, but it is there. So, Western Express with e link. Are you? Western Express with eating. Load Hornby locomotive profiles, yes. Uh, there's no need for River RC or Arnold or Bassett Lake or anything like that. Click the tick. Okay, so that's just setting up. Um, a message will appear saying that the DC controller cannot be found. Yep, there we go. <laughs> This is normal as the eLink's COM port has not yet been set in Railmaster. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> Sorry this is taking a little while. I do want to show you all of this 
which is why I put the option at the beginning of the video to skip right past it if you want to. Um, we've done it successfully. The e-link is flashing. As you can see, the green light is flashing there. That's because the firmware is being updated on it right now. Um, it was a little bit fiddly. I, I, I had to disconnect it. And then once I disconnected it, I had to disconnect it because it kept moaning about how it couldn't find it. So I had to disconnect it. And then once I disconnected it, it, it wouldn't give me the option to pick COM3 because it's connected by COM3. So then I had to connect it again and then suddenly the option to switch to COM3 was available. And once I did that and I clicked the green tick, it found it and it's updating the firmware. It says it's um, updating e-link to version 1.07. So a little bit fiddly, I have to be honest. You know, there are a few people out there that might find all of that a bit complicated. But I did get it done, I did get around it. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go grab a coffee and hopefully it will, done, it will have finished soon. Okay, welcome back again for part 250 or whatever it is. Um, the software has finished doing its job. The firmware on the e-link is fully up to date, so that's really cool. It says the DCC control firmware was updated successfully, so we can click the green tick, just like that. And, that, wow, I mean, yeah, how clever is that? It's even got a locomotive there on screen. It says 460 Keckley Hall, class 4900. So I think, I think the next step then is to get the controller hooked up to the track, put the locomotive on, and then see what happens. Definitely on, she's good to go. Okay, so the next thing then is to um, let's just check that she runs first. Right, so I think if I hit the play button, I can get the locomotive to run. So let's just try that. Oh, yes, yes, she's going. Wow. Okay, uh, stop, pause. <laughs> um, she's actually going in reverse, so I've actually put her on the wrong, way, the wrong way around, or you could swap the cables over or whatever. But if we just pick an alternative direction, so there we go. The software thinks she's going in reverse, but actually we know she's going forwards. So let's try that again. Here we go. She does start to move. I'm just going to really professionally hoist the cable up using my coffee cup. <laughs> wow, that's so smooth. That is a beautiful mechanism. That is honestly really nice. And this is the first time she's ever run as well. Fantastic. Okay, let's hit pause again. I command you to stop. Good. Right, uh, let's get it to come back into shot and then we'll fire up some sounds. Hey, welcome back. I've moved the camera and I thought I'd actually part the locomotive up in this siding whilst we test out the sounds and stuff. So I'm just going to flick the points. Um, I haven't got those hooked up to a, an accessory controller yet, so I can't do that via the computer. But you could, you could do that if you wanted to. Okay, um, I've hit go. It should get the locomotive to gently reverse over the points and then into the siding. Ah! Uh, oof! <laughs> okay. Alright. I'm not quite used to the deceleration values yet and I hit stop a little bit too late. But it's okay. We can get it to... well, we should be able to... it has got a throttle, actually. If I just give it... oh no, that was in the wrong direction. Yep, in fact, if I just flip it to the other, other direction give it a little bit of power uh, and then stop again yeah okay right <laughs> let's put some sounds on here we go I have no idea what's gonna happen Ooh, that's nice so I'm guessing that's just the background sound 
Uh, let's give it a little bit of a whistle. <laughs> That's good. Does it automatically switch it off, or do we have to press the button again? It automatically disables it as well. Fantastic. Okay, whistle burst is number three. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Um, whistle high. Yep, yeah, that is noticeably high pitch. What about whistle short? That's cute. Okay, number six is apparently wheel slip. <laughs> wow. I wonder if it's fancy enough to do that automatically as well. I, I'll be very, I'll be very impressed. Um, I should point out at this point, there are no lights, so maybe the DCC functionality has that built in and that it could do the lights if you fitted them but there's definitely no lights not that I can see okay those are all the sounds I can control until I register the software so I'm going to go ahead and do that now hey folks welcome back <laughs> okay, um, yeah totally lost track about what part of the video this is it's a new day, it's a new dawn for trains. Sorry, I'll stop there before I get copyrighted. Um, okay, basically, um, I had to get used to the software. I found out where all the other sound controls were. I did need to activate the software, that is true, and it has been activated, but it is a little bit temperamental. Sorry, Hondi, has to be said, it, the software can be a little bit temperamental. After the... Uh, um, update after the confirmation the controls stopped working properly I couldn't switch the sounds on I couldn't switch the sounds off I closed the program I opened the program up again and the train didn't want to respond at all um, and then I unplugged the power from the e-link connected the power again and then everything was fine it's like doing that actually forced a reset and all the signals got through to the locomotive again and all the sounds responded and everything was fine. So it has to be said that it's a little bit temperamental. It's very good, it's very impressive software, but it's not completely bug free yet. The, it could be a Windows compatibility thing, it's possible. I mean, they're trying to make this software work with umpteen different versions of Windows, which is quite, well, that's no easy task from writing some software myself. I can tell you that that is definitely not an easy task, but um, it's easily fixed. Just <laughs> the famous switch it off, switch it on again, seems to solve everything. So we're back and we are gonna get Ketley Hall to reverse into the siding and then I'm gonna play you all the sounds before we take a look at the Pullman coaches, put those onto the loop and then see how cool it is as she pulls them. Oh, sorry, no, quick, before I go, um, a lot of people are going to be, probably be wondering about the screen. A lot of people would like to see the Railmaster software on the screen. Uh, I shall do some experiments with running fraps on here so that I can capture the screen for you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'd like to do experiments because it's, it's not the most capable computer in the world. Um, although it's not, it's not like he's trying to run a game or anything, it should be okay. Uh, so, but what I'll do is I'll do that for the next video. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for a video on King Richard II. This is another loco that Hornby very, very politely asked if I would have a look at. This is a TTS Sound King class locomotive. Absolutely beautiful. I'll do this next and I promise I'll show you all the Railmaster software and the sounds for that particular loco. So watch out for that, okay? So let's switch the sounds on again by pressing number one. There we go. Right, okay, so we've heard all the whistles, we heard a little bit of wheel slip, so what we didn't hear was coal shovel. <laughs> That's really nice. For, for such a, a competitively priced train set, for, you know, I am just blown away by TTS sound. And talking of being blown away, he is blow down. I'm not too sure what part of the process that is, 
I'm sure lots of people out there could tell me, but I do know what safety valves are. So that's when the pressure builds up to a point that it's just got to release some steam, basically, otherwise everything will explode. Um, and I do know what injectors are, that's where cold water is sprayed into the boiler, so here's the injector. I'm not massively sure what cylinder cocks are, but I think it's something to do with cylinders. <laughs> It's pretty cool, whatever it is. And then we've got a brake. Okay, that was cool. And then there's a blower. A guard whistle is number 14. <laughs> okay, that's cool. A coupler clank. Wow. And then finally, breakfast. This is the one I'm most intrigued about. So let's check out what breakfast is. <laughs> no way! It genuinely is a couple of eggs and some sausages frying on a shovel. Oh, let me just play that again. <laughs> hey, hey, steady Frank, you'll burn them. We don't want them burned. <laughs> that is brilliant. Oh, so there we go. There's 16 sounds. Well, yeah, uh, technically with this locomotive and we've just listened to them all. Ah, right. Uh, let's take her out of the siding with the sound still on and see what happens. And so if I just very, very quickly show you the software and we make it go a little bit quicker. <laughs> wow! That is, that is definitely much quicker. Well, the software reckons it's doing about 60 miles per hour to scale. Obviously not, not, not for real. Okay, so how do I slow it down? Uh, not that one. That one? Yes. Wow, and then if we, why if we stop her now? <laughs> that is incredible. Um, Okay, there were no automatic brakes or like uh, the screening of, um, yeah, brakes. <laughs> there was no flange squeal or, or, or brakes or anything like that, but, wow, I mean, that, that was impressive. That is so, I, I am honestly blown away at just how good this TTS sound system is. It, it's such value for money, it's, it's untrue. Uh, right, let's put the coaches on. Okay, we're back. The coaches are on. Let's see if I can gently reverse her up to the coaches then, and I'll even play the coupling sound. So, select reverse, give it a little bit of power. Oh, <laughs> I'll never make a steam train driver, I fell short by about a few inches. Right, let's try again. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Oh, the uh, coupling. There we go. Right. Okay. Um, everybody, all aboard! <laughs> Is everybody ready? Uh, you do not want. You do not know what you're letting yourselves in for. Let's have a little whistle. And take it away, Kettley Hall.
at this point I would probably put in like a conclusion or a verdict or something. But I genuinely don't know what to say. Apart from this is this is the most fun I have had with a train set in years. <laughs> I'm just grinning like a kid. I absolutely love it. This train terminates here. Please ensure that you take all your belongings with you when you leave the train. Thank you for traveling with us today.